and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heap of the rubbish which are building? What you got here is you got these folks building a wall. You know the story. What I think we got here in Christianity this day and age is we have got all of our walls torn down. And we need to build some walls back up. Amen? Amen. He said there, revive the stones out of the heat, heap of the rubbish. Go to Psalm 85. Psalm 85 if you would. Psalm 85. Psalm 85. Look if you would please at verse 4. Psalm 85 verse 4. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. That'd be nice. Verse 5, Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Until you get revival, there'll be no rejoicing. Amen? Well, if you would, to Psalm 51 now. Let's read a little bit of scripture. Psalm 51. This psalm, I believe, is talking about the sin of, of, uh, of David. And if you read this psalm, that's what it's talking about. Do it what you want. But uh, Brother Drummond preached right around where I'm going tonight. And it's amazing. He preached the last message before I got to preach. So hallelujah. Verse 1, David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindnesses, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression, wash me throughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my, from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me. From blood guiltless, guiltlessness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou mine lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desireth not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delighteth not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, and a broken and contrite heart, O God. Thou will not despise. I'm preaching tonight on revival. Revival. Father, I want to thank you tonight for being a good God. Lord, you are a wonderful Savior. And God, you're a mighty God. Father, we thank you for being our master, our friend, the best friend we ever had, Lord. Thank you for being our lover. Father, thank you for being our, uh, our kind shepherd. Lord, tonight, Father, I pray tonight that you'd wash me in the blood for the upteenth time today. God, I pray that you'd cleanse me. I pray you'd fill my mind, Father, with the thoughts of God. Lord, I pray you'd loose me and give me liberty. And God, I pray, Father, that the hearts of these people would be sensitive to the word of God. Lord, I pray I'd be real careful, Father, to preach what you'd have me to preach and not what Bear wants to preach. And God, I'd ask, Father, you'd please touch heart. Lord, I pray, Father, if there's anybody that's not right here tonight, Father, they'd get right. We love you, Lord. We appreciate your kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm preaching on revival tonight, and uh, I believe this. I believe that this meeting will not go any further than it's already gone. We've had a good meeting, have we not? 
But I believe this meeting won't go any further until some people get some things cleared up that God's been dealing them with them about for many months, yea, even since last year. Amen. I believe this. I believe that most of our church services that are held are being hindered by the Christians who are willing to give God a part of their life, but not willing to give God their whole life. Amen. Now, the word revival means to return or uh, recall to recovery to life. Uh, to that which has departed, to return to recall to activity of the state of, of leisure, to recall to return to cover, to come back to, or things that you've neglected, amen? It means new life, or to give new life, amen? Uh, to, bring, to bring those things into notice that you put behind you. That's what revival is. Revival is not people getting saved, also people getting saved is great, amen? But revival is getting back what you once had that you no longer have. It's a new life in your Christianity. Amen. It's a rebuilding, like talked about the wall there in Nehemiah. Uh, this psalm is a testimony of a man who recognizes his sin and what his sin has done in his life, in others' lives, and in his whole kingdom. Amen. They say, what did God we would see our sin, what sin's done to our lives and others' lives and our ministries that we might get right. Amen. Now you stop and think about it. There are sins in this building, maybe here tonight, that is hindering the families in this church. I know that. There are sins in this building here tonight that are hindering other brothers and other sisters from growing in the Lord. There are sins in this building here tonight held in the hearts of men and women that are causing this ministry to get to one place and not be able to go any further. Amen? Amen. My question to you tonight is, do you want revival? Yes, do you want revival? Yes, All right, if you want revival, maybe we can find some things tonight in this book that would help us. The first thing I want to say here tonight is that uh, I want you to see that David says here that it's his sin that's the problem, not somebody else's. Look at Psalm 51, look at verse 1. It's his sin that's the problem, not somebody else's. We see here verse 1, Have mercy upon who? Me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy, of thy mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Amen. Every person in this church, if every person in this church would see his sin as easily as he sees somebody else's sin, I believe we could see some revival. I believe we got to the place where it's real easy for most folks to see other people's sins and overlook their own. Like the brother was talking about, we've become somewhat pharisaical. Amen. It's real easy for us to be critical about a brother or a sister whom we think are not doing what God wants them to do. Our problem is we can't seem to do what God wants us to do. Amen. 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 He said it was his sin causing the problem. This church will only go as far as you recognize your sin. You need to realize it's not somebody else's sin. It's not your mama's sin. It's not your sister's sin. It's not your wife's sin. It's not your son's sin. It's not your daughter's sin. It's your sin causing the problem. Amen. David said it was his sin. We believe this. We believe that it's all right for me to sin, but it's not all right for you to sin. It's all right for me to sin as long as you don't catch me. Amen, Brother Harry? Amen. As long as you don't see me or as long as you don't catch me, it's all right for me to sin. But if you dare sin in front of me, ha, 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 I'm going to let you know it. Hypocrite. Amen. You want to know what we've got today? We've got a bunch of people who think that they're better than somebody else because somebody can't see them committing their sin. I wonder what you're doing behind closed doors. I wonder. Amen. Amen. David, all the sin that David's trying to repent of here, he did behind closed doors. And God revealed it to the man of God. I wonder what's being revealed this week thus far that you've been doing behind closed doors. Some people real quick, we're having a great time, ain't we? 
Some people real quick to, to badmouth somebody else because they can see their sin, but they know their own backyard's a mess. But they got such a high wall, can't nobody see in. You ever thought, think about how careful you are when you sin that nobody knows it? Amen. It was his sin that caused the problem, not somebody else's. You're not going to go a whole lot far, a whole lot further in your Christian life until you realize it's your sin causing the problem, not somebody else's. Uh, what he's doing here in this whole chapter is he's showing self-examination. Self-examination. Go to Lamentations chapter three. A lot of scripture tonight. Amen. Lamentations chapter three. And if you can't keep up, just write them down. Lamentations chapter 3. I cannot preach without a lot of scripture because I'm very stupid. Amen. You'll find that out. Shut up. Uh, Lamentations 3, verse 40. He said this. Lamentations 3, 40, talking about self-examination. He said, verse 40, let us search and try our ways. Not somebody else's ways. Huh? But whose way? Say it. Our ways. Ours. Our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart, not somebody else's. Our hands, not somebody else's unto God. In the heavens, we have transgressed. That's you. And have rebelled. That's you. Thou hast not what? Listen, folks, we got to realize it's us. we got to examine ourselves. Go to 1 Corinthians, if you would. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Self-examination. You mark it down. If you get to the place in your life, or maybe you're already there, where you don't examine yourself constantly on a regular basis, whether you're right with God or not, you're backslid as hell! 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and verse 28, he said this, talking about the Lord's Supper, but I'm trying to get a point across, but let every man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he drink, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, that's already been preached on, not desiring the Lord's body, not discerning the Lord's body, rather, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and some sleep. Right. Folks, listen. I'm talking about examining yourself. It is something. I was just in a communion service not long ago, and, and the Baptist church, independent, fundamental, separate, dedicated, blood washed, missionary, minded, all the right adjectives. Amen? We're in this, we're in this, uh, we're in this uh, uh, Lord's Supper uh, uh, ceremony here. Uh, uh, we're, we're in a meeting and they're having Lord's Supper there. And people are sitting there and they're letting their little children take of the Lord's Supper. Now you do what you want. But I'm talking five and six years old, amen, playing with a cup, amen, playing with the bread. Let their kids take of that. See, what does that tell me? That tells me the mother and the father of that child uh, have not examined themselves to see if they're right with God. That shows what kind of respect you have for the death, burial, and Je of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Have you examined yourself this week to make sure that you are right with God, that God could speak to your heart, or are you just going to go through a ceremony like you did last year and try to shout a little bit? Amen? And try to uh, pray a little bit, but not really do nothing serious with God, because until the sin gets out of your heart, not your neighbor's heart, not your wife's heart, there'll be no revival. We need revival. And we're not going to get it till we realize it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, uh, standing uh, in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Examination of yourself. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. He said this, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, uh, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. That Listen, know ye uh, not uh, your own selves, uh, how Jesus Christ is in you except to be reprobates. Let me say this about here. You need to examine yourself, see if you're even saved. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've been raised in a Baptist church. Whoopee. My daddy's a preacher. Well, Glory. Are you saved? Yeah. Well, I can take you down to Romans Road. I can take you and show you the road to hell. Amen. Examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. Are you in the faith? 
Amen. Or are you just religious? Yes. Good. Amen. Let me turn that around. What if you saved? Are you living by faith? Amen. Amen. If you can't figure it out on a piece of paper, if you can't tally it up at the end of the month, if you can't see the way things are lined out, and you don't know what's happening, you're a nervous wreck. You know what some of you need to do? Just give away all your savings. Well, that went real good in Chicago, amen? You know how much it costs to live here? Yeah, I do. So does God. Amen? I didn't say everybody need to do that. I said some people, because they have very little faith, amen, need to get right with God and say, God, I am living totally by sight. Therefore, I'm going to do some drastic to bring me back to reality. You understand what I'm saying? Examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. There are certain things that go along with a Christian walk that is faith. Amen. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Are you pleasing God tonight? You can't be pleasing God without faith. Is everything sight with you? Examine yourself. Don't be looking at others and saying, he's not living by faith. He's not living by faith. She's not living. Are you living by faith? If we were half as concerned about ourselves as we were others, this church would be probably farther down the road than it is. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Look, if you would, please, verse 4. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 4. This is not popular preaching, but it's what we need. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4, he said this. He said, but let every man prove his own work. Pastor, I don't like how they did that. They're not doing it right, brother half, and I am. Hey, let me tell you something. We'll look at the verse before I tell you. Just look at it. Let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. If you do your what you're supposed to do, do your work right, quit looking at everybody else and comparing yourself amongst yourself, you're not wise, amen? Uh, don't worry about how Joe's doing it, how Steve's doing it, amen, how Ray's doing it. What are you doing? How are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? He said, then you'll have rejoicing where? What's it say? In yourself. You know why Christians aren't happy and they have no rejoicing in themselves? Because they're not doing the work they're supposed to be doing the way they're supposed to be doing it. Amen. Then he said you wouldn't have rejoicing in another. Am I right? That's They're good. always looking for somebody else's approval and not God's. If the pastor doesn't say you did good, you're crying. Yeah, right. Amen. You're belly aching. I'm not relying on some man telling me how good I'm doing to keep me going. If my heart's right with God, if I'm filled with the Holy Ghost of God, I'll be doing my work the way God wants me to do it. I'll have rejoicing in myself because I'm right with God and everybody else can do whatever they want to do, but it will not affect my joy. I will have rejoicing. Amen. And I believe in rejoicing. You know why? Because, Brother Osteen, I'm doing my work the right way, the way God wants me to do it. And if nobody else likes it, suck your stinking thumb. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of you need to get a divorce. Some of you need to get a divorce. Yes, sir. From public opinion. Yes, yeah. Would you let me preach this, please? Yes, You're so concerned about what somebody else thinks about you, you can't serve God the way God wants you to serve Him. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, I didn't say be nasty or ugly, amen. I'm just saying this. you got to quit caring what other people are thinking about you if you're trying to serve God. Well, what if brother so-and-so don't like it? If that's what God told you to do, brother so-and-so, I have to go soak his head. Amen. You worry about your work the way God told you to do your work so you can have peace with yourself in your heart and have rejoicing. Amen. That's good, Amen. If not, you're going to have to depend on so-and-so uplifting you all the time, somebody else propping you up. Am I right? Yeah. Brother Harry, he's a pastor. Am I right, Brother Harry? Yeah. It's good to see you, brother. I have missed your ugly face. Amen. Really? 
Hey, he's a blessing. I know Brother Harry, what, 15 years now, something like that? Yeah, too long, probably for you, huh? It's good to see him. But I bet, I bet there's people you just got to keep propping up all the time, amen? Brother Osteen, all the time. Got to keep propping people up. You know why? Because they've not learned to do their own work, their own way, so that God recognizes, listen, them, and puts joy in their heart. My joy is not depending on anybody in this building. Amen. 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 Examination of yourself. He said there, we'll see in a little while, that David lost his joy. Why? There's sin in his heart. Some of you here, if you lost your joy, there's sin in your heart. You have a problem shouting. You have a problem praising. You have a problem just keeping a good attitude. There's sin somewhere in the camp. Amen. Somewhere, somewhere, there's sin. Self-examination. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Talking about you examining yourself, not being too concerned about everybody else. The Bible says you're supposed to mind your own business. Am I right, Brother Huff? Mind your own business, do your own work. Amen. Amen. Psalm 119, look at verse 59. Psalm 119, 59, he said this. He said, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. That's the purpose of this meeting this week. Our object is to get you to think on your ways, see that they're not right, and turn your feet away from the ways you're going into his testimonies. Some of you are on the wrong path. Amen. You can't get a crowd this size, and everybody's right with God. This is one of those messages you've got you to gotta win. Amen. You can't lose. But I didn't, I didn't write it down. God gave it to me. I'm preaching it. You know why? Because he knew you'd be here. And God knows what path you're going down, young lady. You're going down. Amen. Sir, he knows what path you're going down. Amen. You're going down. He knows what path you're going down. He knew you'd be here tonight. Let me ask you a question. Are you going down the right path? Are you? You need, some of you need to turn your ways. Some of you guys are going down. Look, some of you young people are going down the right path so you can get that girl sitting across the room. I wonder if some of you are kind of changing your convictions or changing your thoughts or whatever it is because you're trying to court somebody. Amen. Cupid's dangerous. Amen. You always wonder about Cupid shooting the heart. Amen. He shoots in the where? Where does he shoot? In the heart. You know why? He gets so consumed with that other person that you can't do right by God. Amen. I believe I have hit the stump I'm looking for. Some of you here need to realize, young people, amen, old people, I don't know if you're courting somebody, I don't care. What I'm saying is this. You need to realize whatever's getting in your way to get that sin out of your life, you need to remove it go on. And if it's some little girl, you need to chuck her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 If it's some little boy, you need to chuck him. Amen, girls. Amen. 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 What sin is in your life that's causing you not to have revival? Let me tell you something, man. I've been, a, I've been a youth director, I guess, two times, and I'm in a church now, and I'm helping with the youth. I live with the youth. I like the youth. Yeah. Hey, Amen. They're crazy. I'm crazy. We're in the same basket. Amen. Amen. But I'll tell some of you young people something. The best way I know is to get out of sorts with God is just fall in lust. Yeah. Notice I didn't say fall in love. Yeah. Fall in lust. Yeah. Nobody falls in love. You fall in lust. Love is something you build on. Amen. 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 Brother Sutek married his wife. When he married his wife, he didn't love her. Woo! They prayed together after they'd known each other a while. They prayed. She, he said, I think it's the will of God for me to marry you. You pray. She prayed. She said, I believe it's the will of God for me to marry you. He said, would you like to be, the member of the, be a member of, a SWAT, of the SWAT team? 
She said, I think it's the will of God for me to be a member of the SWAT team. Well, the only way she could have been one is to marry him. Amen? How's already taken? <laughs> Listen. You know what happened? They got married. They didn't love one another. It's been, oh, I can't remember how many years now. But you know what? Of those things, they love one another. Thank you, preacher. Thank you. Some of you are in lust. Love and lust are not the same. And that's why some of you have no joy. And that's why some of you are backslid on God. Amen. I don't know how I got off on all that, but it was a blessing. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, I'm having a good time. You might as well, because I'm going to whether you do or not. Amen. Amen. That's my policy in life. Amen. Psalm 139, look at verse 23 and verse 24. You know them, but we're going to read them anyway. He said, search me, not search someone else. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart, not somebody else. Try me, know my thoughts, verse 24, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in the way of everlasting. Have you prayed this week and said, God, while the preachers are preaching, would you please see if there be any wicked way in me? Or are you going through the motions? Folks, listen. If, if, there's, if there's people here tonight that don't get revival this week, you may not be here next year. Some of you probably already thinking about leaving this church. I don't know. And you know why? Because somebody somewhere, his heart isn't right with God. Amen. It's usually not with something the preacher does. It's the sin in your heart that he hits. Amen. You know what that preacher did? Yeah, he preached on your sin. You wouldn't get right. You didn't want nobody to know about it. And here it is getting revealed, but there's a good excuse to leave. There you go. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you and you are welcome. Amen. Amen. Self-examination. Uh, there are some things you acknowledge when it's your sin. Go back to Psalm 51. There are some things you acknowledge when it's your sin. Psalm 51. Some things you acknowledge when it's your sin. Number one, it's committed against God. Look at verse 4, Psalm 51. Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and then this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. All sin is against God. Amen? It's committed against God. Now, uh, you say, well, David here is confessing sin that he did to other people. Well, let me tell you something here. Sin that you've committed today is against God. Amen. Oh yeah, everybody else suffers, but your sin is against God. Amen. The problem is Psalm 4.4. 4. Psalm 4.4 4 says, Stand in awe and sin not. He said, Stand in awe and sin not, Psalm 4.4. 4. Do you know why you sin? Because you don't stand in awe. And stand in awe of several things. You don't stand in awe of the holiness of God. Amen. If you ever dawned on you how holy God was, you wouldn't be committing that sin. Amen. And that is a lost art is preaching on the holiness of God Amen. this day. Because then you're a Pharisee. No, but I believe 1 Peter says we are to be holy because what? He is holy. Amen. And I'll tell you the reason why you have no problem sinning in your life, some of you, is because you don't realize and stand in awe. Amen in magnificence and being struck by how holy God is. I don't sin because of how holy God is. That's one reason. Another reason, he said, stand on, sin not. Because some of you need to look and see the destruction that sin brings. I mean, I can look back on my life. So can you, if you're over the age of 21, saved, amen? I look back on my life and see the destruction that sin brought in my life. And I stand in awe of all the sin that affected my life and how it destroyed my life and how it destroyed everybody around me. David here, it destroyed his kingdom. Amen. It destroyed his family. It destroyed everybody's, everybody who ever had confidence in him and his leadership. 
destroyed it. There are people that have confidence in you. If they found out what kind of sin you're involved in, what would happen to that dear young Christian? I told my brother the other day, I had my brother here. Hey man, new Christian in the Lord, got mixed up in bad doctrine, trying to help him out. I told him, he said, what's all those kids coming up, sign your Bible, sign their Bible, sign their Bible. I said, yeah, they do that. I said, they're taught, like Brother uh, Drummond preached this morning about making heroes. They're taught to make heroes of preachers. Amen. I don't see a thing wrong with that. You all do whatever you want with it. But uh, he says, uh, well, what's all that about? I told him about sign their Bibles. And I, and I told him, I said, you know, this is, a, this is true. I did it this morning. I'll do it again tonight. I'll do it the rest of the week. Whatever. Every time I sign a Bible, I say, God, don't ever let me fall. Amen. I signed some dear, sweet little girls' Bibles yeah. this morning. Yeah. Might have been seven. I said, oh, God. This girl thinks I'm, I'm a, she thinks I'm really a man of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, amen. Look, God, don't let her down. Yeah, amen. Don't let me fall. Amen. He said, yield not your members as instruments of unrighteousness, but yield them unto God as instruments. Of Am I right? Yes, That's something you do, yes, not something God does. And then he said over there in Corinthians, he'd give you the grace to keep you from falling. But you've got to yield yourself or there will not be no grace. Amen. And every time you fall <laughs> into sin, which I believe you dive in, you don't fall. Every time you dive into sin, it's not that God didn't give you enough grace not to get in it. It's that you didn't yield yourself and receive the grace that God had to keep you out of it. So if you go into sin uh, and you say, well, God didn't keep me from doing that. No, fool. Uh, you let yourself go. Amen. How dare you blame God for your sin? He said, against thee have I committed this sin. Also, some things you acknowledge when it's your sin is that you're the one that needs wash. Look at verse 2. He said this, verse 2. Wash me truly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Do you see that? He said, I'm the one that needs the washing. Amen? Isaiah 1, if you would. Isaiah 1. I'm the one that needs the washing. Amen? Isaiah 1, look at verse 16. He said, wash you, make you clean. That's a good statement. Why don't you do that tonight? Whatever it is in your heart, why don't you get washed? Why will you be so stiff-necked? Why will you be hard-hearted when God stretched out his arms and said, I love you, I love you. Like Brother Gordon song, won't you come home? Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Look down verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, watch it. They shall be white as snow. Though they be like crimson, yet they shall be as wool. I like being clean. I like it. Amen. Amen. I like to go out and work real hard, Brother Harry. I like to go out and sweat, get stinky, amen. Amen. I like amen. to sweat my guts out and work real hard, and I do. Amen. And then I come in, and I get in a hot shower, and I get clean. And after you've been out working all day, you've got all that grime and grud all over you, and you, you know, you smell like a mule, amen. You go in and get under that shower. Doesn't it feel good when you get out of there? Amen. There's a feeling on your flesh that you just feel what? You feel good. You feel clean. Yes. Knows how confident you feel when you feel clean. Well, I came here tonight to preach. I took a shower this afternoon. And I put on all the smelly good. And I combed my hair. And did everything I could with my face, which isn't much. Did all I could with what I had to do with. Amen. Came here and I was clean. I felt confident that I was clean. 
So because I felt confident I was clean, I had no problem going up, hugging people, Brother Harry's neck and some other man's neck. Amen. You know why you won't get next to God? Because you ain't clean. And you don't have confidence in God because you ain't clean. Because you know God doesn't want to be around you because you're dirty. Amen. Amen. And amen. David said, it's me, God. I need some cleansing. You recognize when it's your sin, you're the one that needs a cleansing, not somebody else. Amen. I want to say this. Self-examination is the beaten path to perfectiveness. Amen. Amen. You need to find your sins out before they find you out. Amen. He deserved judgment, but he asked for mercy in verse 1 there. He said he deserved judgment, but he's asking for mercy. Some of you deserve judgment tonight, but you need to come down here and ask for mercy. Amen. Some of you don't think God will forgive you because you're so far gone, maybe. You say, God couldn't forgive what I've done since I've been saved. And if he does, I just can't seem to clear my conscience even though he has. Let me tell you something. Your heavenly father is not like your earthly father. He not only forgives, but he what? Forgets. And God don't expect you to remember either. Amen. I'm not going to kick myself around the block for things I can't do anything about. Amen. 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 I sin, I sure do, on a regular basis. And I confess all day on a regular basis. Amen. And then I what? Forget about him. That's what some of you need to do is forget about him. Quit dragging around with you. Number two, number two. The emphasis of the sin is on the inside, not on the out. Go back to Psalm 51. It's on the inside, not on the out. On the inside, not on the out. Psalm 51, look at verse 2. He said, wash me, uh, wash me truly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in an iniquity on the inside and in sin did my mother conceive me, blot out my, uh, I'm sorry, behold, thou, is, behold, thou desirest truth in the where? inward parts and in the hidden parts at the inside thou dost make me to know wisdom purge me with hyssop wash me and I shall be clean amen cleanse me or wash me and I shall be whiter than snow he's talking about the inside amen uh, the sin the, the, I'm sorry the emphasis of the sin is on the inside uh, not on the outside uh, David committed uh, the sin he committed we're outward sins. Murder, adultery, amen, deceiving Uriah, making him drunk, amen. But you notice here, the, psal the, the psalmist does not ask forgiveness for any of these outward sins. You don't find him asking to forgive him for murder. Adultery. You don't find that in the psalm. Why? Those were just the fruits of where it was coming from. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 10. He said, Create in me a clean what? Heart, O oh God. You can't see that. It's on the inside. And renew a right spirit within me on the inside. Amen. Do uh, you see that? It's on the inside. Go to Mark 7. Mark 7. Those were just the fruits of the heart condition. Mark chapter 7. I had to get here before the week was up. Mark chapter 7. You know, the best thing you could realize is that Mark 7 is talking about you, not somebody else. Amen. 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 Tonight, as we're reading this, I want you to look at Mark 7 and think it's you, because that's what it is. Mark 7, look at verse 18. Pick it up there. Or verse 19. I'm sorry, verse 19. Because it endureth not, injureth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out the draught, purge, uh, purging all meats. Verse 20, and he said... That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Do you see that? Watch it. Well, not the man. Look at verse 21. From within, out of the heart of man, receiveth evil thoughts. How's your thought life? David had to think of these sins before he ever committed them. Nobody knows what you're thinking about but God. Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders. He's thinking on these things. That's all that David did. But nobody knew it. It was on the inside. That's why Psalm 51, the problem's on the inside. That's why he's not confessing all the murder. And the he's confessing his heart condition. 
not the fruits of the heart. 22, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's it, friend. It's the inward part. A clean heart is an act of God, not an act of man. Man can never create a clean heart. Never. Amen. Amen. Let me say a lot of us cover up a bad heart with good works. A lot of us cover up a bad heart with good works. Go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. I told you there'd be a lot of scripture tonight. Amen? Amen? 2 Chronicles. I'll tell you what. We can cover up a lot of sin with good works. 2 Chronicles 25. 2 Chronicles 25. Let's look at a few things here. 2 Chronicles 25. Where are you at tonight? Where are you at tonight? 2 Chronicles 25. Look if you would please. 2 Chronicles 25. Look at verse 1. 2 Chronicles 25 and verse 1, he said this, And Amazah was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was uh, Jedidinan, something like that, of Jerusalem, and he did that which was right, watch it, in the sight of the Lord. See that? But not with a perfect what? You can do right and not have a perfect heart. You're covering up a bad heart with good works. That's where we're at in the Baptist church. Oh, he's such a wonderful fella. Is he? Oh, she's such a wonderful sister. Is she? Well, look what all they do. How is their heart? Second Kings, Second Kings, Second Kings. Go to 2 Kings chapter 10. Where are you at tonight? Where are you at tonight? 2 Kings chapter 10. That's all right. You'll do fine. 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 18. 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 18. And you know the story here. Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, uh, and Ahab Baal, uh, he said, he, what he's doing here is gathering all these people and he's going to kill the bell worshippers. Am I right? That's what he's doing here. And I say thank God for that. Amen? I mean, he gets all these bell worshippers. All you Catholics, come over here. I love you. But I hate your doctrine. All you bell worshippers, come over here. Let's get them in the house of Baal. We're going to have big sacrifice to Baal. He gets them all in there and he kills them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. Brother Barrett, so, you know what he said over there in Deuteronomy? He said, man, you put the idols before you? Kill them. Right. They bow down to any other idols with you? Kill them. Amen. 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 That's what he said. Amen. Just the filling scripture right there. Look at verse 27. They break down the images of Baal and broke down the house of the Baal and made it a, a, a drought house. Amen. That's where the dung goes. Amen. Under this day, thus Jehu de destroyed Baal out of Israel. Hallelujah. Howbeit the sins of Jeroboam, here it is, the son of Nabat, who made Israel a sin, Jehu departed not from them. To wit the golden cows that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well and exceeding and executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to uh, the children, uh, the fourth generation, He's going to let him sit on the throne. Look at verse 31. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord. See that? To it of Israel with all his what? Good works. Cover up bad heart. You know what I found in our little circle here? I've got to hurry on. I want to hear Brother Bell. But hey, I found a lot of people thinking real highly of somebody because they do a lot of good stuff. Amen. And down the road, that man's heart shows itself. Yes, sir. It usually starts backbiting the preacher. Why? Because he's working so close with the preacher, helping the church and all. Amen? Yeah. You know what you need to do over in first? You need to ask God to give you discernment of spirits. It's always amazed me, uh, brethren. You know what I'm talking about, preacher, brethren, yeah. pastor. Yeah. How a man can come and preach in somebody's pulpit and be preaching in his pulpit five and six years and be committing adultery and... The pastor never know it. Why is that? Why is that? I'll tell you why. 
because they put their friendship, Brother Osteen, uh, over the discerning of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I can trust Brother Osteen because I've known him for 30 years. And I can't trust Brother Osteen. Amen? Amen. But there ought to be able to be, you ought to be able to detect something if something is not Amen. right about him. Right. Amen. But you know what it is? He says, oh, man, it's me. You know, I, I'm having a bad day. No, 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 no. God's given you discernment of spirits. You ought to be able to discern that stuff like that. And I just say this. I think adultery and fornication has got its own spirit. I believe I can prove that from the Bible. And I think it's awful that most pastors, most preachers, most Christians who claim to be walking with God can't tell that just because somebody can preach the house down, just because they can sing uh, to the glory of God, amen, just because they can rattle the rafters, just because people get saved and get right, that they can't tell that something's not right. Amen. Good works can cover up a bad heart. How are you tonight? You can't have revival till you realize it's not your good works. It's your heart condition. Amen, 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 amen. I don't have time. i got about 14 other references. We'll just go on. Amen. Uh, I want to say this. You're, if you're going to have revival, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to, have, to have a tender heart. Uh, go over there to 2 Kings chapter 22. You know it. Let's read it. 2 Kings chapter 22. It's not that you need something new. You need to practice what you already know. You've gotten so used to what you already know that it's ho-hum. Oh, yeah, I know that story. And you can't get any help from what you already know. Yes, sir. Amen, amen, and amen. To some of you, some of the greatest scriptures in the world. That bread is never stale, brother. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 22, um, Josiah had a tender heart, amen, toward the Lord. Uh, some of you need to have a tender heart. You've got a tender heart for everything except toward the Lord. Verse 1, 22, he said, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was uh, Jedidiah, the daughter of uh, Adaliah, of Boscath, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of David, his father, and turned not aside unto the right hand nor unto the left. Amen? He had a tender heart. Um, what, what, um, I've written down here. He had a tender heart. If I can find it, I'll give it to you. Anyway, he had one. He had a tender heart. Amen? <laughs> he had a tender heart. And I think, I think in this day and age, we, we're getting to the place where we think a tender heart means a guy cries a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, I go over to Mark 5, and I find a guy crying a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 You ever see a preacher just get up in the pulpit? Oh, it's so good to be here. Oh, is it God good? Oh. Time after time after time after time after time. Boy, you get wear out real quick. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Tears don't mean a tender heart. They could be a cover-up for a bad heart. Amen, amen, and amen. I want you to see here, uh, oh, look down at verse uh, Look down at verse 8. And Helkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan, Shaphan the scribe, I have found a book of the law in the house of the Lord. How come they didn't, where was it? Where was it? Amen. Uh, how come they didn't know it was there before? Amen. They weren't looking. He said, here, and Helkiah gave me the book to Shaphan, and he read it. I want you to see, he discovered the book. He discovered the book. Amen? Some of you need to discover the book. Oh, you know it was there, but you haven't done anything with it in so long. If you found it, it'd be a new discovery. Amen? Verse 10, he got, he got, uh, verse 10, he got familiar with the book. He said, Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Helkiah delivered the priest, hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Uh, see that? He got familiar with the book. If you want revival, you're going to have to get familiar with this book. Amen. The reason why you're backslid tonight and you're not right with God is because you've got unfamiliar with the book, book that birthed your soul. Yes. Amen. Amen. We believe it's the King James Bible, Lord of God, perfect Lord of God. We just ain't going to read it. Right. Dumb. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Verse 11. I want you to see here. Uh, he responds to the book. He said, and it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book 
of the law that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Helkiah the priest and uh, Anakim, the son of Shaphan, the uh, Akbor, the son of whoever, and Shaphan the scribe, and uh, Ashaliah, and the servant of the king, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is, fa that is found, uh, for great is the wrath of the Lord uh, that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened uh, unto the words of the book to do according to all that which is written concerning us. Is God thinking about bringing wrath on you tonight because you refuse to obey what you heard from the book. Amen. How about it? Amen. You know what you've heard, but you've done nothing with it. What makes you think God won't bring wrath on you? Amen, 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 amen. 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 Do you know why in the book of Genesis and uh, chapter 6 over there God brought a great flood and they didn't believe he'd really do it? They said, hey, said the imaginations of the heart of the were only evil continually, amen. Uh, hey, they didn't believe he'd really bring judgment on them. Do you know why Jeremiah preached, 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 they wouldn't listen? Because they didn't believe that God would really judge them. You know why you won't get right tonight? Because you don't believe God will really judge you. You think he'll judge your brother or your sister, but surely he wouldn't judge you because he loves you. God will judge sin. And he will judge your sin tonight, right now. That's right. Amen. 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 Talking about revival. Revival. You can't have revival until you realize you're the problem. Amen. You can't have revival until you realize you need the cleaning. Amen. Verse 11. He humbles himself. I ain't got time to read all this. He heard the word of God said there, and he humbled himself. He repented of his sin. Thank you. And, uh, and he repented of his sin. Break time. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's all right. What I'm telling you is simply this. If you don't humble yourself, you don't read the word of God and you don't respond to the word of God, you won't find peace. Look at verse 20. He said, Behold, therefore I will gather thee uh, unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered unto thy grave in what? Peace. Amen. Peace. Do you have peace with God tonight, Christian? Amen? Amen. Back to Psalm 51. Coming down the wire, Psalm 51. Psalm 51. God is concerned about the inward, not the outward. If I can get, if I can help get your inward right, you'll do all right. Amen. But if you just want to clean up the outward, you're going to waste everybody's time. I'm Amen. Amen. I don't make a big deal about the outward. Somebody just gets saved. I figure if I can get his heart, all of a sudden he'll want to do right. Amen. I've proved it time and time and time and time again, and I'm proving it right now. Amen. 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 Psalm 51. I want you to see something else. Psalm 51. Uh, look down here. Uh, I want to say, it gives, you, it gives you peace. It gives you a right spirit. Look at verse 10. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. See that? He said he wanted a right spirit. A right spirit will keep the presence of God in your life. Amen. It'll keep the presence of God in your life. You know why some of you can't seem to get a hold of God? God's nowhere around you because you've got a bad spirit. You got a bad, nasty, amen, spirit, Brother Drummond. You just mean spirited. Amen. Brother Barry, you're really mean spirited. Amen. I wonder about the fellow who's saying that if he's mean spirited. Amen. You know what you found? Somebody just nailed your sin to the back wall. So therefore, that person's not right with God. I tell you what, the the one that hollers the most usually the fellow gets hit with a rock. Amen. <laughs> Amen, 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 amen. Amen. We're talking about, he said, created me 
a, a creating in me a new spirit, renewing me a, a spirit within me, renew a right spirit within me. Some of you need a right spirit. You got a wrong spirit, amen? The Bible talks about a haughty spirit. The Bible talks, which means pride, eh? mingled with contempt, amen, and disdain of others. A haughty spirit. You don't like folks. Why? Because you just don't like them. They ain't like me, so I don't like them. Amen? That's a real sweet Christ-like spirit. Amen? Amen? A hasty spirit. Ecclesiastes 7, 9, Proverbs 14, 29. A hasty spirit. Amen? Talks about a, a hasty spirit. Talks, it talks about this spirit causes you to have vain imaginations. Your bad spirit will cause you to think bad of others. Go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Amen, 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 amen. You say, why do I think this way of somebody else? How come I just can't control my mind? Because you don't want to. 2 Corinthians. I believe a lot of what you do, you try to blame on the devil. You sure give him a lot of glory for things you don't deserve. 2 Corinthians. Amen. 2 Corinthians. Amen. Let's go for chapter 7 verse. Uh, chapter 7, verse 1 first. 2 Corinthians chapter I don't want to miss that. Amen. Having therefore these uh, promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Hallelujah. Let's clean up the outside. And what? Amen. Clean up your spirit. Some of you got a proud spirit. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Right. Amen. Amen. You get mad. Amen. Amen. Right. He said, clean up your spirit. Yeah. David said he had a bad spirit. You know, David knew he had a bad spirit. That's why he's asking him to clean it up. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Now go to 2 Corinthians 10. That's where I wanted to head for. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, talking about imaginations. Why do people? Why do you think bad of other people? I'll tell you why. Because you've got a bad spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, look at verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, casting down imaginations, cast them down. In other words, something comes into your mind about somebody or something, amen, and it's, and it's just wicked. Yeah. I know why they did that. Because you make up a whole scenario in your mind. Yeah, you amen. Yes, amen. Not even, ain't no truth to it at all. The Bible says take it out. And cast it down and stomp on that sucker till it dies. Amen, amen, amen. He didn't shake my hand. I know why he didn't shake my hand because he's mad at me. Preacher, come right by. You see the look on his face? I know why he looked that way. Making it up. Amen. Imaginations come from a bad spirit. If your spirit was right, you'd say, Man, he must be having a bad day. I got to pray for him. Amen. Amen. Verse 5, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bring it into the captivity. See that? And every thought to the obedience of Christ. Philippians 2, 5 says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. What you're supposed to do, you get an imagination. The Bible says you bring it into captivity. You picture a big cage right here. When you get those imaginations, you bring them into that cage and you captivate them. You hold them captive. Then you bring them to Christ and say, Is this right? He says, No. And you take them out of the cage, you throw them away. Amen. Most people that have a fallen out with somebody else in the church thought bad of them before they ever had fallen out. All right? And there was no, there was no foundation to have those thoughts. That's a sign of a bad spirit. Real quick, lastly, back to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I said I was coming out of wire. I didn't say that was the last point, Drummond. Amen. Yeah, but you was thinking it. My imagination told me. Amen. <laughs> Psalm 51. <laughs> Psalm 51. I want you to see the results of revival. Psalm 51, look at verse 12. He said this. Psalm 51, 12. He said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. First thing I want you to see there is that joy is restored. Aren't you tired of not having any joy tonight? Some of you used to have joy, but you ain't got it now. Because there's a sin in your heart, be it bitterness, unforgiveness, can't get over something. The Bible says in Philippians, forgetting those things which are behind and pressing what? But you just can't get over the past. You can't forget what they did. You can't forget what she did. You can't forget what he did. Forgetting those things which are behind. 
You're looking at a man who could never stand here tonight. Unless I put some things behind me. And I'll just leave it right there. Well, what's keeping you from going on? Restore the joy. Aren't you tired of not having any joy? Look at verse 13. He can tell others about the Lord and have some converts. He said this, verse 13. He said, uh, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. What's keeping you from winning people to Christ? Is it because you've lost your joy? How about it? I mean, you got the same mully grubs the world has. Amen? You're supposed to be saved. Amen? Loving the Lord. Ought to be something different about your countenance. Amen? Also, I want you to see he testifies of the goodness of God. Verse 14 and 15. He said this. He said, Deliver me from blood guiltless, O God. Thou God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of the righteousness. Amen of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Amen. We need God to build some, some walls like we started out this thing in our lives. Not to, not to keep people out, but to get in there, get friends in, get family in. Amen. And keep the devil and the world out. You can't have revival with sin in your life. Isn't that deep? Why do I have to scream for an hour to tell you that? I'll tell you why. Because we deceive ourselves. Yeah. Are you deceived tonight? Do you think you're really a better Christian than you are? What sins have you thought about this week about doing if you could get away with it? You will not get nothing more out of this meeting until the sin gets out of your heart. Why don't we just get it right tonight and we can shout it out the rest of the week? Amen. That I know of right now, Brother Osteen, there's nothing between me and my God. That I know of. Can you say that? How about it? Do you want revival? Let's bow our heads. Amen. Just come on.